Hi everybody, it's Thursday night sewing night, yay! <laughs> so here we go, uh, I hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. I'm doing okay, can't complain. So today we're going to talk about basics of hemming. Uh, we're going to a little bit about how to do some curved hems, uh, blind hems, rolled hems, uh, some hand stitching. But, you know, getting the hem right in the first place helps. Um, so when you're, you can't, it's hard to do on, on a dress or a skirt. I, I don't think, it, I think it's very difficult to do your own marking. Marking it is the first part. So you want to have some tools. Um, so I have, let's look at some of the tools that I have for hemming. And this is the one I have for skirts. And it's one that I, my hammer, like I said, excuse the mess in the studio, <clears throat> is this thing. And it sits on the floor, and this was my mother's, it's very old, and you unscrew this and you put this, here's where you would mark it, and you're going to loosen this screw and move it up and down. <laughs> we had lots of, well we're short, it didn't go, it goes up a lot higher, but not today. So you would put it where you want it, okay? Then you would stand, have a person, the person would be standing on this side of it, and you can still get these. Uh, I saw these on on uh, Amazon, and I think Waywack W A W A K dot com, and they have them. They're about twenty five bucks for this for a new tool, and they're better than they are now. But what you do is let's just pretend this is a skirt. Okay, someone's wanting. You put this real close to it, and then you would. Okay, this is where you want the. You determine where you want the hem. So usually you go. Okay, uh, let's see. And I would make, you want it about there, and you can take your pins, and has a little slot to put the pins. And then you would say, okay, is this where you want it? You know, you, you hem it up, you pin it up like that, and you go, okay, this is where you want it? I go, yeah. Okay, so then you have them turn, you know, put it on here, and you turn. Well, I didn't get it in the same spot, you get the idea. <laughs> I also have one of these is also attached to my dress form so if I happen to do a dress and I know how far from the floor it needs to be and being that the waist and everything else is just in the right spot I can use the one on the dress form and it, it works exactly the same as this and you would just line it up put your pin in turn put in your pin turn like this okay <laughs> and then you would there's your hem okay so this would be your pin marked and from the outside again don't have if you're if you're pinning the hem for someone don't have the turn have them turn the dress inside out because it makes it easier to because if it's this way then all you have to do is pull it up like that don't do that you want it with the right side of the garment out you don't want to, when you're fitting, don't turn your clothes inside out because then you're putting, you're fitting the left side of your garment to the right side of your body and vice versa. And some of us have hips higher than the other, shoulders higher than the other. Some of us don't stand just right. And so therefore the front of our skirts have to be shorter or longer than the back. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things. You also want to be wearing the size, the size heel of the shoe that you're going to wear with that garment as well uh, when you're hemming. And then you would... And then I'll show you what we do to press these. Uh, and that, there is another one that's similar to this, only it's usually a big pole, and it's got a little tiny, instead of a pin place like this to put the pins, it's got a little, like a squeeze bottle with a thin line for the opening, and you would just simply walk up to it, and it's got a squeeze bottle, and it, it blows white chalk, or whatever color chalk you put in there. And again, so every time you turn, you just bump up against it and squeeze it those are about 35 to 40 dollars and I've seen the cheapest I've seen those is on waywack.com you can get one for I think for 36 is the cheapest I've seen or even 31 so those are really nice to use um, for hemming and because a lot of times even if even if you're um, a basic sewer that all you'd know have ever done before is sew on a button well, if you buy a dress, it's never the right length, is it? <laughs> never is. 
It's always, I'm, I'm way too short, so I usually have enough to make a whole scarf or something out of what I cut out of the skirt, <laughs> so, because I'm very short. Uh, so, you know, we, even if you don't sew, it helps to hem. And I'm sorry, doing like my husband did when, um, before we were married and he was in the military, staples do not do well for hemming. They also rust in the wash. Uh, Masking tape doesn't work real well or painter's tape or scotch tape. They don't work well, you know, so even people who don't sew should at least know how to hem. To have something hemmed at the dry cleaner is probably going to cost you at least $20, $25. So, you know, okay, say so if you do two hems, the, even with that expensive one, it's paid for itself. So... It is it does help to learn how to do your basic hemming, and I don't mean staples or scotch tape or glue. <laughs> Although some glues will work. There are some tapes you can use to, to as a no-sew method, but you can't use them with all fabrics. Uh, some of those you can use are, this is Stitch Witchery. It can be used. There's steam a seam in, in a roll form, and this is like a, a, a light fusible. And you would just press up your hem and then hit, hit it with some steam and let it sit for 10 minutes. Now that's going to work on fabrics that can go into the, that can be ironed, silks and stuff. This is going to show through, so you always test it. Um, also, sometimes the temperature that it takes in order to, um, to fuse this, the layers together is going to end up messing up your uh, your iron. It's going to mess up. It can melt your fabric. You can't use this stuff with like corduroy because you can't hit it pr hit with a with an iron very easily. So it's easier to do it either by hand. And we're going to talk about how to do some things by hand as well as by machine. It's faster by machine. So you need a couple of things. You're going to need some good pins. Um, you want to have a good iron when you're pressing something. You want it. Well, say you have. Well, here's this one with the pins. Usually, the first thing I do is I, because the pins don't always go on straight. So I will go along the garment and on the ironing board and make sure everything is kind of straight. And usually, I will give it a preliminary crease with my hands. Okay. I don't press, and then I'm going to press, and you want to press probably with steam. Quilting, we don't use steam, but with garment sewing, we do. And you want to test it to make sure you don't have your iron too hot, that you're going to melt your fibers, especially if it's a polyester or something like that. So, you're going to press it with steam, and usually I'll pull the pins out at this, and, and it could be chalk, you know, chalk markings. So, the first thing I do is I just mark, I just press wherever the pins are to get my straight okay that's how big I want it okay so then I'm going to measure I will measure uh, a seam gauge works and I don't know what I've done with mine but any kind of rulers just say that I want a two inch hem about so what I if it's whether it's a curve or not a curve let me get friction pin and I'm just going to mark it. And then I cut it. Be, even before I try it on, I will, I'll know I don't want anything less than a two inch hem. But usually I'll go for the rule, cut this two inches. Then I will pin it up and try it on again before I so, cut any more. But if I know I want about a two inch hem, I will go ahead and just pre-cut that off. And I'll pin it back up and we try it on again. Okay. Then the, the, depending on the type of hem you're going to do depends on how you're going to treat this. So there's some several tools you can use to help press these seams. Okay. So let's just say I want my hem to end up being one and a half inches. So this is a nice thing to have right here, which is a... Uh, it's called a Dritz Easy Hem, and it's got curves on here, to, which we'll, I'll show you in a minute how to do this. Well, it's got straight lines on the other side, so let's just use the straight line one. And I want this to be a one, half, a one and a half inch hem. So I've got a line here, 
that I can use and my one and a half inch is here and here and now I've got this so that it's all even and it's ready to hem. They do have these in a silicone. This is an old one. I've had this for years. I do need... Oh, yeah, this is really old because this one is the originator of the Bishop Method. And if you're like me, we had to learn that silly Bishop Method in high school. So now my hem is, is ready, and it's pressed and ready to go. And I'm going to save this one to when we start to hem. I don't need all this fabric, so cut some of that off. Okay, we'll save that to when we start to stitch. On a curve, I'm marking it with the wrong one. That's a pencil. I'm probably going to do this on the outside. On the right side. And we'll do it. Okay. I'm going to do an inch and a half from the edge. And I'll just, this way it helps to have a nice seam gauge or chalk or whatever. I'll just mark it along the curve. I keep losing it. <laughs> I should put my finger on it there. An inch and a half, okay? Then I'm going to you know, like find two marks. And I'm just going to press the edge and it's not going to lay flat and that's okay. Like this. I want that crease because my from here on this is going to be I'm going to be guided by this crease. Okay. See that's all ripply. Okay. This is where I could take this in here and try to press it steam it uh, it's not going some fabrics are going to go better than the others this one's not going to go this is where it helps to have about a half a quarter inch to a half inch do a basting stitch and then i'm going to just take a thread and pull it like the top one to pull in this ease wools are going to be easier So that's relatively straight and I'll pull it on this side just to gather this in a little bit distribute these gathers then I can put this piece in and see now it's laying kind of flat and this is where you need spray starch okay ordinary spray starch spray it let it soak for a second or two go let's let it soak in now this isn't a really hot iron this iron also does not put out a lot of steam and that's a problem and see now from the spray starch and of course you want to do it on a fabric see look how nice and straight that is now that is that don't touch it until it's till it's cold go down here and we have another curve let me distribute these gathers a little bit and just don't iron just go straight up and down and look you're pressing all this mess in all this gathering is getting pressed in and eased okay and the spray starch is going to make it stay okay now, if I need to turn it, I can turn it again. Once I have this, then I can take this and say if I wanted to just do a double fold hem. Okay, I can now take this and just fold it inside. Usually I'll eyeball it or you can use a ruler. And now, this is ready to go. Now, if it's a slippery fabric that's being obnoxious, you know what I'm gonna tell you to use. My regular ladies will know. My favorites to see how that doesn't want to stick. And when I go, say if I were doing a just a double fold hem where it would be sewn, it doesn't want to stay, does it? 
Elmer's washable glue stick. Okay, because I can take this and just press a little bit. Now again, you want to test this. This is nothing but starch. Okay, and I'm going to t and it doesn't work on all fabrics. Some fabrics it won't stick. This is home deck, and I'm not sure how much plastic is in this fabric, but we'll try. Okay, put it back down. And it's going to stay. See, it's now glue-basted. You can also use uh, steam a seam to, to baste it in. In fact, if you wanted to just have an adhesive, because some fabrics you don't, you could just deal with this with the uh, the seams. This is called a uh, steam a seam. I think it's steam a seam. I don't know. It's a fusible web <laughs> that goes in there, and it it will stay. But if you're planning on putting this in the dryer, this will not hold. The heat of the dryer makes it go away. And now it's ready to sew. And you would just sew and it just straight, nothing special. Okay. Okay, but just say we wanted to hand hem this. I'm going to thread a needle. There we go. Locked out. I like to work with the hem upside down. Like this. And I will pinch the two edges together. And I like to do what's called a herringbone stitch. Which is actually a tailoring stitch. And this is so that the hem can still move. I, if you just sew it with a machine, this doesn't move and gets kind of rigid. That especially if it's a and, and it can affect the drape of the skirt. But if you're if you're doing a skirt or a blouse, I like to do this one because the hem is still movable even though it stays straight. So I would put the knot inside the fold. I'm going to be traveling this way but I'm going to keep going backwards and forwards. So I'm going to, no, I'll take that back. I'm going to work left to right. I haven't done it in a while. Okay, and I'm going to take into my fabric, I'm going to take a stitch into the hem right at the edge. Or you could even do it inside if you want this to be in it. I'll do a few this way. And one way is to do what I call a pick stitch, which you're literally grabbing like a single fiber on the back of it, it depends on the fabric and then again I'm going to go in this direction so it makes X's here and then I come over about a half an inch if this is for slacks you want this closer than a half an inch because you don't want the uh, stiletto heels to get caught between the stitches and this is what I call the herringbone stitch, and this is great. And you can do it surface, you see it in the surface. And I'm literally grabbing, if you can see that, a single little, single, one or two threads. The thicker the fabric, the bigger the bite you can take. And we get a few, and it goes pretty fast. And you can't see it. I'm using blue. You can't see it at all. And that hem is very secure. Now, if I am doing just just a, where I'm doing a pick stitch, where I'm going to go through, this is a, like a running stitch. So this one you're going to come in and take about an eighth of an inch off the edge of the hem and just pick a single stitch. And this essence is a running stitch. And you have to be careful not to pull too tight or you're going to see it from the front. The goal of this thing is to have that fabric look like it was just cut off at the bottom with no raw edges. Okay. Okay. And okay. And see now that gives you a, a neater hem. So if I'm going to do a herringbone, most of the time I'm going to bring it down. So I pull this away and take my stitches like this. See how I pulled this hem down? And I'm taking my stitches this way. Okay. 
and you won't see it at all. These are how suits are done. Especially if they're unlined. Okay. And see now when that's pressed and closed, it's completely invisible. So that's how pretty much how you do hand hemming. And I will hand hem a lot of times on really nice things uh, or on, on delicate fabrics. Like if I'm dealing with some silks or, or chiffons or something like that, I will, I call it hand pick the hem. And that way I get a nice, not so dense hem where if I were to sew it, this is called a double fold hem or it could be a double fold hem. And say so over here, I would just sew it from one side and now if it starts to go like that, I don't know if you see how this is, this is puddling up here. It's pushing on front. Then you want to do something like take your seam ripper or a still, I don't have a stiletto here. Well, seam ripper will work because I don't know where my stiletto is or a stiletto. I mostly will use my seam ripper and I will go slowly go and push it down and push it towards the needle and that helps to ease it in. Yeah, okay. okay. And see this is going to make it, it it's not as drapey. See I can as this this is rather stiff compared. Now granted I had the right color thread underneath but here you can hardly see it. It's nice and even. And it's nice and flat. Oh, I forgot to show you this one. This is a hemming guide that you can make yourself. And this is just a, a folder. And I simply drew the lines so that I could bring up my fabrics. As you see, I'm using this here. And I need to press it. These are great if you need a quarter inch seam because a lot of times they're, we're asked to fold over a quarter inch seam and you never know. This will help you. Now this one you really can't use steam with it because the paper gets wilty. But this you can make yourself. You can finish the edges of your hem by either pressing it under and just doing the stitching. Or you could uh, serge the edges of it. That, that works also. We're not talking about knits today. Knits, I would usually, if you have a cover stitch machine, that is the ideal way. Uh, probably in another month or so, we'll cover hemming of a hem. Our next time we do something with knits, we'll cover how to hem a knit. So this is old-fashioned seam tape. And you just simply put this on about, and I just want a straight stitch. Yeah, straight stitch center needle's good. And I'm going to sort of put this, I'm going to use red thread. About, overlap it by about a quarter of an inch, and I didn't set the foot pedal up, okay. I'm going to just let it do its thing. Go too fast. <laughs> And so it, there, that finishes the edges of your seam. See, that looks really nice right here where it's just simply straight stitch, but it covers nicely. And you can either hand or machine hem it either way. Another nice thing to do is to use lace. And lace, you're going to work from the right side. Now, you want to use um, hemming lace. Okay, this is hemming lace, and notice it has like a has like a little ridge really close to it at the top and the bottom. And so you can see where it has a little margin, a double row of stitching at the top and the bottom. This is hemming lace, and you can get it in different colors. It is different than. Um, French heirloom lace, edging lace, where it they look real similar. The difference is, is that French heirloom lace, A, is cotton and very expensive, and therefore, and it's got these little threads that going in between these train tracks so that you can do lace shaping. But yeah, that stuff's really expensive. With This hemming lace is very cheap. 
and it's very easy to use. Again, you're going to put it on your machine with a straight stitch about a quarter way in. And I think I'll slow down. <laughs> I don't have the foot pedal going. Now, you know how you had the curve before and you needed to bring that in? You can also use this to give it a stretch. And I'll stretch it as if this were needed to be curved in. And then it's going to retract. Oh, that's too slow. Yeah, hard to guide when I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, I could move it, but there, I want it to go right between the rail. And as I pull this, it stretches a little bit. And it's going to give, this will work if you just need a tiny bit of ease to make that hem flat. Okay, and stop. There goes the first thing on the floor. <laughs> okay, there we go. And see... That's going to pull that in just a tiny bit so that when you, if you were curving it, it would give you just enough ease to make the curve. And then you could do whatever hem you would like on that. So that's one option. So I, I do use these two things. And again, this is my fusible web tape that I use a lot of. Um, okay. Let's see, some of the feet you can use. Um, this helps. This one is called the V foot, and it is a little. It is just like the J, looks just like the J foot on the bottom. The difference is, is that this has this guide. It has these teeth or these little red guides right here. That if you're trying to say I'm trying to make a hem that size, okay, I'm over using that fourth red edge, and if I have this folded correctly. And I could just go ahead and just, um, I'm looking over here, keeping the edge of the garment. So this is good for when you're doing um, a double fold and you want that edge or that hem to be perfect, at least straight and nice. And see, that's going to give me a very nice, see now that's perfectly straight. I'm going to move before I lose any more of these feet. <laughs> okay. Um, but most of the time we're going to do a blind hem, a regular blind hem, which I can do very quickly. And let's just say how you fold for a blind hem. Blind hem will work very well on a straight hem. Unless you have it basted down like that curved hem would work very well, but you have to baste it first. Okay, so I'm going to, so here's my hem or where I want my hem. Okay, so this is the front of my garment like that, right? There's the front. So I put the hem so that the fold of the hem is facing the, the right of the machine. Let's just say that serge. It's pink. You, although you could just leave it pink if it's something that's not going to be. And then I want that blind hem to be hidden. I'm going to place these pins about a quarter to a half an inch away. But they have to be consistent. And I'm going to put the balls of the pins or the flat of the pins on the inside. Here, I'll just pin it like this quarter inch away. The point of the pin facing the bottom of the hem. Okay. Place it hem side up. Turn the bottom so that now the balls of the heads of the pins are now facing the outside of the machine. You know, I, I only have, they're facing now the inside of the machine. And I have one layer of fabric hanging off. Three layers of fabric with a big S. Okay. Then you're going to press, sort of, you can press this. The, pre the flatter it is, the better. And then we're going to do a blind hem. And there are two feet you can use for the blind hem. On the Baby Lock and the Brothers, they have the R foot. And the R foot has got a little blade right here. Okay. So, you have to test it. That's what scraps are for. 
Yeah, I'm going to place the blade right here at the at the fold. Okay. I'm going to hand walk this. Let me find the stitch. Now, let's look at this. If you don't know what stitch to use because you have too many on the Baby Lock and the Brothers, we have a stitch advisory. So I hit the little question mark or sometimes it'll be a, a sewing guide. I want the sewing guide. I, and here, I don't know how to do a blind hem. I can just touch blind hem. Then I have to select which one I want, okay? 2-01 is for other fabric. I'm like, okay, that's wovens, I guess. Stretch fabric, like knits, you're going to use 202. They're basically the same stitch. The difference is the straightaway stitch on 01 is straight. The other one is zigzag. I want that one. And it now can even tell you how to do this. And it'll tell you, you go page by page on how to do this. Um, so it says here, half an inch, da da, baste it. Now, like I said, if you have a circular one where it's curved, they're telling you to baste it. I don't baste anything. And I don't follow their directions either. <laughs> but it's showing you how to set it up. Okay, and there's a blade. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Okay, and return, and okay. And it is already set up for me. So I'm going to put this on slow. What I'm looking for here, let me go really close. Let me stand up and get this close and close, close, close to for you. Okay. Let me see. Put this dead on. Okay, I want this blade right there. I'm going to hand walk these stitches because what it does is does so many stitches. I think it's zigzag and then come over and so many stitches. It's going to start where it's going to take a stitch out of this fold. I want it to just take no more than a thread or two. So yes, that's good. And then it comes over and it does three forward stitches, three Okay, four forward stitches. Then it comes over and takes another bite. If it's not reaching, you either have to push this harder against the, the blade or make that zigzag wider. Okay, now, notice here's my width of stitch. If I want it wider, it's showing the arrow going that way that actually you think you're making it wider, you're not. You're actually taking that zigzag and you're moving it more shallow. Zero, and then see that makes it wide. Just drop something, I don't know what. <laughs> then that's gonna take a bigger bite of a zigzag. I'm gonna leave it at the regular. And let's take a look and see what it does, okay? Now let's see if I can say this. Ah, you know what? I'm going to put the foot pedal on. Take the pins out, by the way. That wouldn't be good. Okay, now I'm going to go very slow. There, I'm taking a bite. You can see it taking a little bite. Take that pin out. Okay, and done. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right, did really good. <laughs> I can barely see it and I have red thread. And it, once it's pressed out, you'll never notice it. Now it is red thread. Now if I had done, if you look really close, you can see the red thread just a tiny bit. But this say is laying nice and flat. What I like about using this better than hand is because if I've done it right, stiletto heels can't fit through there. They can through my hand stitches. So that gets it very tight and once it's pressed, it looks super nice. 
Now this one, some of your machines might have come with this foot. It uses the same stitch. And let me show you how to set this one up. So I'm going to take this foot off. And this one's called the adjustable line hem. What I really like about this one is I use it for other things. I will use this for a, gu a guide on an edge stitch. So it's set up the same way where you have the S. Alrighty, I need to go back to the beginning of the pattern. Because yes, it's got a pattern to it. So anyway, here's my left part of my zigzag. Let's start this again. I'm going to place that needle so that it's grabbing a couple of threads. A little more than that. Okay, I'll make it just bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to move this. Boy, this is stiff. Come on, here we go. I'm going to move that blade so it's right up against the fold. Here we go. Alrighty, so now I can sew it. It's too slow. <laughs> you can get more precise control. Now this, see? There you can see the little red dots, but like I said, if I, and I moved it so that it would show the red dots. If it shows too much of the red dots, like... Where is this one? Yeah. Say this one, it missed. It didn't catch a bunch of them, okay? Say this one, I didn't see anything and it didn't catch, okay? Or this one I did. So what I would make the adjustment for here is for this first one, I want that zigzag to go that way more. So I would probably, see how the arrow is pointing to my right or to my left? So I want it to go more to my left. It's going to shift that zigzag over a little bit more to the left. Or on this one, if it's grabbing too much, I want it to go the other way. So now the arrow is going to the right, which means it's shifted that zigzag over just a little bit. So that's the adjustments you make on the baby lock and the brother. Oh, let's, let's talk about the narrow hem. Here's the foot right here where it's got... A double this little like pig's tail in there and it's going to curl that fabric underneath for you and I'll put this on what I usually do is I'm going to pick a stitch is I'm going to press it twice and finger press it the width of these they're only like less I think it's an eighth of an inch and I'm going to take a couple of stitches just a couple of them and raise it up I want something to start and I want to take a nice long tail come here grab that I want to have something to hold on to. Okay, see how I have this to hang on to, to start the stitch. Because you have to help it through. So I will put this in and I will feed it into the foot. And a lot of times it helps to put the needle down to catch it right where it was. And put the needle down. Oh, way too far. Up, up, up. <laughs> Okay, I need a center needle position. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go center needle position, put that needle down. Okay, and then put the foot down. Okay, hush, I know. Then I'm going to, as it starts to stitch, it wants to jam. So then I will pull this. And see there it curls. And you just have, you have to keep, and it rolls right in, and it really will give you a nice double film, and it's small. It, you are restricted by this size. See how nice that looks? 
So this is nice for handkerchief scarves and everything. Now, if you're turning corners, this is where you're going to have to start it here and then pull it pull it through as it's going. Otherwise, it will jam right there. My favorite way to do teeny tiny corners, teeny tiny hems, especially on like a chiffon, is I don't want this foot. I want the regular foot. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my fabric over about a quarter to a half an inch and press it. So it's nice and crisp. And then I'm going to put my needle, I put this even here, and then I'm going to put my needle all the way to the right. Okay. And then I'm going to sew across. I just want a tiny stitch, literally catching less than an eighth of an inch. I just want to not like a knife edge it. And I'm just guessing because I can't really see it at the angle I'm sitting. Okay. Okay, nice and sharp. Okay, then you're going to take some scissors and I'm going to trim this all the way back as far as I can or about an eighth of an inch away the problem with the rolled foot rolled hem foot is that it's a set you, you can't vary anything um, in the old days, they used to make them an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, a sixth of an inch, a half an inch. So you could pick whatever you like. Okay, then you're going to take, see how you've got the raw edge right here? I'm going to fold this right there, right at the edge. Now it gives it a nice, then I'm going to sew right over top of that stitching. I wanted it closer. And a lot of times, again, this is going to help to hold a tail out to the back. Because I have that an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to make an eighth of an inch rolled hem, which you don't have a foot for that. Okay, grab this thread, this uh, thread in the back, because you're going to help, to, you're going to use it to help pull it through for the first few stitches. Okay, and then stitch right over the, the line you just stitched before or close to it <laughs> like I did because I can't see it <laughs> now yeah you wouldn't use red thread and see this gives you a tiny tiny little hem yes it's red but if you had white it would look great. In fact, you could even do this first one, the first stitch you do, use wash away thread in the bobbin and in the needle. And guess what? You can rinse it away and you'd only have one left. This is how you get little tiny chiffons and something really pretty and teeny. That is an itty bitty hem. It is smaller than a serge rolled edge. It's tiny. Okay, now. The other fun thing we do is we hem jeans and we hate them. I don't have any jeans fabric, but this is thick enough. So what I did is you have a fat, flat felt seam in jeans and you always have to hem over top of it and we get stuck right here. Now there's this item that you can get and they even have it at Joann's called a hump jumper, which is uh, looks like a V shaped like this. So what you do is you put it as you're approaching the thick part. When you get to here, you're going to raise your presser foot, push it in from behind. Then it stitches over the big part. And before you go, and what would usually happen is that well, two things: as you would approach this, and as you you would get little teeny tiny stitches, and they were always crooked. And then when you came off of the big lump there, it would. The foot would go down like this and it could break and it would come down like that and it could end up breaking the needle and you also end up with a great big stitch over here. So anyway, with the hump jumper you would stitch to about here 
and then you're going to raise the presser foot, put that V part like this, continue stowing over the, hump, over the hump. Then you're going to stop, raise the presser foot, put the V this way, and then it, it will help level it off till you get off. Then you take, when you get off the hump, the, the foot clears this lump here. Then you can take the plastic piece out and continue sewing. And yeah, that was okay. It worked. But you don't have to do that. So I'm going to go back to um, left needle position because I want to be as much on this, this as I can. So I'm going to pin it and I'm going to go slow. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to use a regular stitch length. So we're going to use the leveling pin and that's this black button that's in the back of the foot. And everybody says, what's that for? Well, this is what it's for. So I'm doing my hem. And then as I approach, okay, I'm going to hold it in. And this, come on up. I, I'm, they say you can go full speed. I don't feel comfortable going full speed. And it does fine going up when I get to the top. And I'm not going straight either. Okay, I'm going to raise the presser foot, push in the leveling pin, and this one isn't wanting to stay, but I'm going to hold it in, at, which means it's going to lock in that foot until it clears the lump. And it's still locked in there, and that just let loose, and therefore I should have nice stitches. Let's see. Let's see what I, I did it right. <laughs> Let's see. Actually, that looks pretty good. And it would have gone up there had I not been so hesitant. And yeah, I got crooked there. But I'm not sitting square to the machine either. And actually, those stitches are nice and even in length. There's no teeny tiny little bits and no big old gaps. So, yes, it worked. But don't be timid like I was. As you're approaching it, don't be afraid to... to uh, to just keep going. These, even the cheapest entry level baby lock and brother, well, not brother, not the ones you buy at Walmart, not the big box stores, but the ones you get from a dealer, they should be able to go through nine layers of denim easily. And because this is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, there's how many layers here? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the fold over is nine layers. This is going over nine layers of denim, and that didn't really strain, and the only problem we had was Jerry was being timid. <laughs> but that's what the what the, uh, the the little black button, also called the leveling pin, is for. So now you're ready to go hem all those pants if you have any questions you can either leave them in the comments below or send me an email at waltzquilt at yahoo.com that's w-a-l-t-z-q-u-i-l-t -T, all one word at yahoo.com and i'll be happy to answer i'll see you later bye